Hello guys. Oh, let me take these off because of the glare. I am coming to you from a Tuesday. It is late afternoon. I am finishing up with work and with studying for the day. And I have decided to do a little long get ready with me today. I've gotten a bunch of requests on my TikTok lately just being like, would you ever do a longer version of the get ready with me? If you don't follow me on TikTok or on here, hi, my name is Mary. I'm 24. I live just outside of Washington, DC with my fiance. I am a freelance writer editor. I obviously make content and I'm in the process of getting a graduate certificate from the University of Washington. So that's all about me. Um, and on TikTok, I make like makeup get ready with me is where I just chat to you guys and then little outfit videos. I'm not like a fashion icon or anything, but I just kind of show you guys like my process of getting ready and some people like it. So today we're gonna do a long version for YouTube. This is actually a really good day to do it because my mother-in-law is in town and so we're going to dinner tonight. So I'm gonna do hair, makeup, outfit for dinner. Not sure where we're going yet, so I'll have to decide the outfit later, but that's fine because I can just do hair and makeup now. Go ahead, I do makeup, hair, outfit. I think it's very unsettling when I see people do outfit first. I don't know why, because it makes sense. Like you don't want to get makeup on your shirt when you put it on, but I just, I cannot get out of the makeup, then hair, then outfit cycle. So that's the order we're doing today. Okay, here we are. I mean, my makeup routine is definitely a lot different than it was a year ago. I think I posted a current makeup routine a couple months ago. It hasn't changed a ton since then, although I'm definitely using less on my face right now because I'm trying to be sensitive to this little flare up. I hope this lighting is okay. Um, I'm gonna prep my face with the Road Barrier Restore Cream. I'm trying to use it up. I'm almost done with it. Oh, I have a delivery. Usually when I make a makeup get ready with me on TikTok, I pick a topic and then I just talk in that topic. I have not picked a topic today. There aren't a lot of life updates I can give you other than the fact that, as I said, my mother-in-law is in town, which is really fun. Starting with the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. I mostly just put this where I have the most visible pores, which is on my cheeks. I would usually go in with the um, Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Hollywood Filter or Hollywood Flawless Filter, but I am trying to use fewer products on my skin, so I'm actually just gonna skip the Flawless Filter, skip foundation, and just do concealer. That seems to be working pretty well for me right now. And I'm gonna do obviously around my mouth where the flare up is. And then this is a very, like a little goes a long way concealer. So I'm probably putting way too much on. Just like a little bit on my forehead. And it also kind of, it dries down a little bit quickly. A little on my cheeks with my rosacea. It dries down pretty quickly. So you definitely have to blend it in pretty fast, but it looks beautiful afterwards. And at least on my skin type, you don't have to set it very much. I do have dry skin, um, but it's not a super dewy. It's like a very soft, soft matte kind of concealer. Um, I'm gonna go in with the Laura Mercier. This is the Secret Brightening Powder for Under Eyes. It's really small and it's similar in texture and consistency to the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. This is a brightening powder for under the eyes. Um, I will say if you're going out at night and you're planning on taking flash pictures, this does give a little bit of flashback. Not in like a ghostly way, but like, it's not joking when it says it's a brightening powder. It does brighten significantly. My cheek routine hasn't changed in a long time, so you will recognize these products from my last makeup routine video. Over the winter, I used a lot of cream contour, cream blush, things like that, and I think I will start doing that again as the weather gets colder. I just didn't like wearing that many cream products in the summer when it's very hot and humid. Um, but for bronzer, I'm going in with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. If you have been following me on any platform for any length of time, you've probably heard me talk about this collection because I really, really love it. And then for blush, I'm doing the ambient lighting blush. And this is the shade Sublime Flush. A lot of these makeup products are linked either in my Like to Know It or in my Amazon storefront if you, you know, if you want direct links, but obviously you could just look at a Sephora app or go into a store and, and find them. I always like to let you guys know that I have affiliate links, but I don't ever expect you to use them. If you want to use them, they're there. Thank you very much for using them. They don't make anything cost extra for you. Um, I just get like a, a very small, it's a very small commission, but it exists. Um, but I don't want you guys to ever feel pressured to use affiliate links because obviously it's your money and it's your choice. But if you want them, they're in my bio, or sorry, in the description box. I always do bronzer on my nose because I like the way it looks very sun-kissed. Some people have told me recently that I'm using way too much bronzer and blush. I will take that under advisement and probably not change my routine at all, but 
your voice has been heard if you need to know that. And then I take my blush and I concentrate it on the upper portion of my cheekbones. I like stop right here. And I started doing that during my little makeup journey um, last fall and winter and I find that it does really lift my face and it makes my face look um, just a little bit more, puts more emphasis on the cheekbones and it looks a little bit more snatched. And I like a big pink, 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 pink blush. I always put blush in the middle of my forehead, which is um, why some people think I wear too much blush. And I also put it on my nose. So Matt and his mom are playing golf right now and I stayed home to obviously work and study um, and now I'm getting ready and doing this. But yeah, they're playing golf right now and then we have to decide where we're going for dinner tonight. Now that blush and bronzer is done, I don't think I'm gonna wear eyeshadow tonight. I just like don't really feel like it. Um, so this will be a pretty quick makeup routine. I'm gonna use the NYX Brow Glue, holy grail makeup product for me. It's my absolute favorite brow gel. And I give it a second to kind of sit on my face and dry down a little bit before I start going in with like powder or my um, brow pen because I find that that just makes it look better and last a little bit longer. I do shave off the tail ends of my brows. Um, again, I started doing that um, at the start of the year and I used to extend my brow and take it downward because I'm sure we've all seen those like little diagrams on Pinterest or on YouTube or whatever that say your eyebrow should start right here and then end right there. And you can see <laughs> how much space there is there. So I used to draw my eyebrow down further and looking back, it definitely made my whole face, it just looks different. And then not only do I not do that, but I also shave off the very tail ends. Your brows like change your face so much. And I think that this style of brow is a lot more flattering on my specific face. So I don't know, if you're in the mood to do a change, maybe change your brow shape responsibly. Use good decision making <laughs> when changing your brow shape because it is a pretty key feature on your face. It really worked for me, so I really like it. Brow gel is on. I'm just gonna leave it for a second and curl my eyelashes and put on mascara primer. I can't live without mascara primer. It's another holy grail item for me. The mascara primer I swear by is the Voluminous Lash Paradise Base from L'Oreal. Okay, now while my mascara primer is drying, I go back and finish the eyebrows. I like go back and forth depending on like how things need to dry. I do take my finger and I kind of stick my brow down to my skin. I just feel like that elevates the whole look. Or it does nothing and I'm making it up in my head, who really knows. I take the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in the shade Granite and I really only use the lighter side. I only really use this lighter side and I just go in and I kind of fill in the gaps and then I take a brow pen and I do the hair-like strokes. And the brow pen I use is actually black. I used to also use like much lighter colors on my brows because I had heard if you have dark hair, like if you have blonde hair, use one to two shades darker. If you have dark hair, use one to two shades lighter. So that's what I did because I was blindly following other people's advice without taking into account my coloring, my face, and what looks better on me. I just personally think it looks a lot better on me and my face to have darker brows. So if you take anything at all away from this video, which Maybe you shouldn't because I'm not an expert in any of these things. But if you take anything away from this video, it's to like listen to advice, but ultimately do what works best on your face, which takes some experimentation. And it might go in opposition to things that you've heard. I have been using a brow growth serum, but to be honest, I haven't been incredibly consistent with it. And so I'm not seeing a lot of results, which is my fault. But I have also been using a lash serum by Lilash, Lash, which I really like. And I have already started seeing some results from that. I have also used Grande Brow. Oh, Babe Lash. I've used Grande Lash and Babe Lash, and I've seen great results from both of them. But in both instances, I felt like my lashes got to a certain point and then completely stopped responding to the serums. I had to switch serums to keep seeing results. So I don't know if that's a me thing or if anybody else can relate, but that is what I've been doing. Okay, now that my brows are filled in with powder, my camera overheated and I had to let it cool down. And now I'm a little bit more pressed for time. But I am gonna go in next with the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. This is another holy grail product for me at this point and I use it in the shade black. And I just go in and I make like the tiniest little hair-like strokes and this darkens the brow, but it also, it darkens the brow without making it look blocky. You know what I mean? Cause I have naturally almost black hair. You can see my roots up here. 
Um, and so I just really like the way that this looks, but my eyebrows, although they're dark, they are pretty sparse, so they don't look dark. So this just really helps a lot, and I flick the brow pen, and it makes very thin strokes that I think look pretty realistic. One thing about these pens, though, is that they don't seem to last very long. Mine always run out of product or go a little bit dry fairly quickly. I mean, they're, they're, it's a drugstore product, so it's not insanely expensive or anything, but it's still annoying. I should probably try other brow pens and find one that lasts longer. I just do like the effect of this one so much that I'm hesitant to branch out of it. And that's that. And then I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm not gonna do eyeshadow today. I am gonna do a darker lip, I think. So now I just have to do mascara. I've really been liking these two lately. I use kind of a combo of them. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Mascara, and this one is the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. Looks like this, pretty gold packaging. And I always like using two mascaras because I like my eyelashes to be as big as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and combine these quickly. I do think I've found through trial and error and experimentation that I like the look of no eyeshadow or very, very light eyeshadow or, or simple eyeshadow because I think that darker or just more complicated eye looks make my eyes look small. That could 100% just be this weird like perception in my head, but I've worn some smoky eyes lately just for fun and I like the look of it. I like like the messy, undone, almost like grungy look but I do think they make my eyes look, I don't know, not, not, it's not the most flattering look on me. I prefer to wear um, just mascara on my top lashes. This is another change I've made. I always used to wear mascara and eyeliner on the bottom, um, and I don't do that anymore because I think it flatters my eye shape better. So that's just another example of like, you really don't know what works best on your face until you try a bunch of things out. It's easy to get stuck in a comfort zone with makeup, and to be honest, I this is my comfort zone with makeup right now but it's a totally different comfort zone than the one I had a year ago. I also kind of suck at mascara and I usually always get it on my eyelids, but just a Q-tip will take it off as soon as it's dried, so I don't stress about it too much. I am happy with my eyelashes right now. I think I'm just gonna do my lipstick. This is the Rimmel Lasting Finish Automatic Lip Crayon in shade Ravish. Looks like that, honestly, pretty similar. This lip liner job, is a little shoddy, I'm not gonna lie. All right, I'm gonna do Too Faced Cocoa Bold in Triple Fudge. Just, I think this is gonna be such a perfect fall color because it's like a dark red, but it's kind of brown. Oh my God, I love that. It's crazy how a dark lip can take what is a honestly very unskilled makeup routine. It's very basic and make it look so much more special. Okay, I brought you in front of the window so you can kind of see the lip color better. I really, really like that color. I really like the feel of the lipstick, so. Cool. Okay, now I'm gonna do my hair. I'm gonna curl it. This is three day old hair, so I have dry shampoo in it. My natural waves have kind of gotten messy and bent because I've been wearing buns. Okay, I have moved to the floor for this section of the video so I could have a little bit better lighting, see myself in this mirror and also have a plug um, to plug my curling iron into. This is the Beach Waver 1.25 uh, diameter barrel. I'd also like to thank Beach Waver for sponsoring this portion of the video. This is a really cool curling iron that does the curling for you. So I'm gonna curl my hair today, but first I need to brush it and put heat protectant in it. I am gonna use the Beach Waver heat protectant. This is called Great Barrier. I feel like people focus so much on the damage to their ends that they forget to adequately protect the mid shaft. But if you think about it, your mid shaft is gonna become your ends. So you might as well just put it everywhere. I need a trim to be honest. It's been like four months since I got a trim. Obviously with my wedding um, next year, I don't wanna make any drastic hair decisions right now in case I grow to regret them. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am tempted to tone my balayage red for fall but I feel like now is not the time. Now is not the time. Oh my God, I love doing my hair and realizing just how many grays I have at the ripe old age of 24. I think gray hair is so stunning and when my time comes to have like a full head of gray hair, I will embrace it. But because I'm 24, it's, I, I didn't, mm, it always catches me by surprise when I see them. So I've already done this side of my head. You can see these 
gorgeous curls. I'm obviously gonna like brush them out afterwards. And I'm just gonna show you how the Beach Waver works because it is genuinely the easiest curling iron I've ever used. So this is a self-rotating barrel, which I'll show you what I mean by that. It has these two buttons on the sides and they rotate the barrel. So the clamp is really tiny because you only clamp the end of your hair um, into it. So I'm gonna take this Clamp the end of my hair down, and then look at this. Isn't that cool? Oh, also, I'm using this on 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm holding them, I don't know, I don't really count, maybe like 10, 15 seconds. I feel like certain sections of my head are more difficult to use heat on than other sections, if that makes sense. Like, some patches of my scalp seem to grow hair that is like thicker and more resistant to heat, so I hold those ones for longer. And then you just let it go. Look at that. Put the hair in. It's so easy. Let's see, what other updates can I give you while I do this? We're having, we're having some apartment issues, not with this one, actually with the next place. Um, the only issues are because Matt's not a US citizen and sometimes that causes issues in really unexpected places. I think everything's gonna be okay, but we just have to, there's like additional information we have to provide and a whole different application we have to submit. Um, so, uh, we thought that we had gotten the apartment. It turns out we haven't gotten the apartment because we have to submit this additional application. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, all of that works out and we actually get the place. And if we do get the place, we'll be moving um, towards the end of October. I hope we get the place though, because I'll be honest, we thought that we had it because we got this like welcome email. So we were like, oh cool, we have it. And then the email told us to download the, like the app and then we had to put in like move-in information and we set up our electric and, like our cable and everything through the app so we obviously like thought we had the apartment and then we learned today that we don't actually but I really hope we get it because oh, I really hope we get it because I have already uh, bought two pieces of furniture and shipped them to that address so Maybe that's my fault. I just, we genuinely thought we had it. Um, but hopefully everything works out, but that's the only real update I can give you. Classes are going well. I am going home uh, just for uh, like a couple days in October. I think next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend. Going home for like two or three days because my little sister is actually having a baby and I'm going to the baby shower. Matt's coming too, it's boys allowed. Um, I'm really excited about that. It's like crazy when your baby sister is having a baby. Like it's such a, a, like a, just a beautiful and emotional thing to witness. So I'm really excited about that. Look how perfect these curls come out. So good. I'm gonna go ahead and montage the rest of this just because it takes me a while to curl my head um, and I don't have enough things to jabber on about. So I'm gonna go ahead and montage this up. Before I'm brushing it out, I am gonna just gently brush and then hairspray. Here is the final reveal. It's like the perfect curled, but not too curled, very like casual little look. Obviously you don't have to brush out the curls as much as I did if you want like a tighter look, but personally I think this just looks better on me. Really beautiful, super easy to use. Go ahead and link the Beach Waver down below and thank you so much for sponsoring that part of the video. Now we need to pick outfit. Like I said, I think I'm gonna do jeans and a cute top. Can you see my head? Yes, okay. All right, outfit time. I found out where we're going and it's pretty casual. I think jeans and a cute top is like a-okay. I think I'm gonna use this for the cute top in question. It has this like little cutout here, which is super cute. Okay, here is that top. I do actually need to like pick up the base because I need to leave in like 15 minutes. So here is the little top, cute. I'm gonna do these jeans. I've been absolutely loving these jeans lately. They're from Indigo Octopus, but the brand is a Goldie. Okay. I actually have a mirror right behind the camera so I get to like see what I look like in the mirror as well as show you guys. I think this is cute and appropriate for the uh, restaurant. Um, accessories. I think I might do my red bag because I'm wearing this red lip. I think that's very like fall and it kind of goes. 
And then for shoes, you know what? I'm gonna wear my Docs. These are my Doc Martin Jadens. I absolutely love them. Not for everyone, but I really like them with perfect fall shoe. I have had these for like two years and I still have to wear these like gel heel pads so that I don't ruin my feet. They look like this. They just go like over or under your socks and they keep you from getting blisters. They are one of my Amazon storefronts like biggest selling items of all time because they're just that good. So I will link those down below. All right, here is the outfit. I wish I could like have more time to show you guys, but I took a little bit too long doing my makeup. So here we are. I think it's cute, it's casual, it's very fall. I really, really like this outfit. I hope you guys really like this video. I've never done like a getting ready video on YouTube before like this, like not to this extent. So I hope you liked it. Make sure you let me know what you wanna see next. Sorry, I've been like talking so fast this whole video. I'm just trying to get out of the house in time. I hope you guys like this and I'll see you in the next one.